Now let's start with the solution. Since this is a common base configuration, RB is automatically zero and VB is grounded. In the equation for the loop L, we make the changes and we get this expression. We plug in the values and RE comes out to be 4.3 kilo ohms. Now finding RC is the tricky part. You are given a voltage swing at the collector of plus minus two volts. It is helpful to draw the graph of VCE versus VBE to see where the limits lie. The two limits are cutoff and saturation. Now at cutoff, obviously VCE is going to be equal to 10 volts. But what should be the lower value of the output swing? Remember that for CBJ, that is the common base junction, to be in active mode, VCE should be greater than or equal to 0.3 volts. The lowest of this limit is slightly above VCE sat, which is usually 0.2 volts. So our point is marked by X on this diagram, slightly above VCE sat and having a value of 0.3 volts. This is the point of edge of saturation. Now to have a swing of plus minus 2 volt at the collector, we need to incorporate this 0.3 volts as well. So in reality, for the transistor to have a swing of plus minus 2 volts, you actually need to set VC to 2.3 volts. The 2 volts from the voltage swing and 0.3 from the VCE value at edge of saturation. If you go beyond that, your transistor will be driven into saturation. Right, so using that, we calculate VC, but we need to find one more quantity, that is VE. VBE is 0.7 volts, and since VB equals 0, VE comes out to be minus 0.7 volts. So VC is 1.6 volts. Remember that biasing the transistor at VC equals 1.6 means biasing the transistor at VC equals 2.3 volts. This ensures that we have a swing of plus minus 2 volts at the collector. Now finding RC is very easy. We take the value of alpha to be 1 and so IC equals IE and it is 1 milliampere and RC comes out to be 8.4 kilo ohms. Now I know this was a bit tough, especially this part, but if you did not understand it, you should play this video again until you are very clear how we got to the value 2.3.